Aloha, this is Pastor John Kaivi, and I have another wonderful true life account in the book of John. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Jesus forgives an adulterous woman. I'm going to read the scripture, and then I'm going to dive into the applicational commentary. <clears throat> John 8. Verse 1, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Rabbi, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing Jesus. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, she said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. <clears throat> the Jewish leaders had already disregarded the law by arresting the woman without the man. The law required that both parties to adultery be stoned, as stated in Leviticus 20, verse 10, and Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22. The leaders were using the woman as a trap so they could trick Jesus. If Jesus said, the woman should not be stoned, they would accuse him of violating Moses' law. If he urged them to execute her, they would report him to the Romans, who did not permit the Jews to carry out their own executions. This is a significant statement about judging others because Jesus upheld the legal penalty for adultery, stoning, he could not be accused of being against the law. But by saying that only a sinless person could throw the first stone, he highlighted the importance of compassion and forgiveness. When others are caught in sin, are you quick to pass judgment? To do so is an act as though you have never sinned. It is God's role to judge not ours. Our role is to show forgiveness and compassion. When Jesus said that only someone who had not sinned should throw the first stone, the leader slipped quietly away from oldest to youngest. Evidently, the older men were more aware of their sins than the younger ones. Age and experience often tempered youthful self-righteousness. But whatever your age, take an honest look at your life. Recognize your sinful nature and look for ways to help others rather than hurt them. Jesus didn't condemn the woman accused of adultery, but neither did he ignore or condone her sin. Let me be very specific. Jesus didn't condemn the woman accused of adultery, 
but neither did he ignore or condone her sin. He told her to leave her life of sin. Jesus stands ready to forgive any sin in your life. But confession and repentance mean a change in one's heart. Confession and repentance means a change in one's heart. With God's help, we can accept Christ's forgiveness and stop our wrongdoing. Stop our sin. Folks, this is such a wonderful teaching, a real live account that happened almost 2,500 years ago. And it is a testament that we need to stop our sinful ways and we need to gravitate to Jesus and stop our wrongdoing in this world. We need to live and move into holiness and righteousness to the best of our ability. Will we be perfect? Absolutely not. But we need to move in that direction, folks. And we need to gravitate to Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for us. He did the work for us. That's why we live in the dispensation of great salvation by grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. I hope this message found you well. I love this story. This is such a true life account. And because of our condition in our world today, Everything in sex is a, is a free-for-all. There's online pornography. There's, there's a, a, a adultery. There's fornication. S sex outside of the marriage covenant. The sexual immorality is at the top of the, of, 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 the, of the food chain here. And we need to stop that. And we need to gravitate to our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and I, I implore you to to do a self-examination if you're struggling with any sexual immorality, adultery, secret, a secret relationship, secret sin, fornication, if you're not married and you're having sex, homosexuality, you know, God designed marriage. We didn't. God did. And of course, online pornography that kills, that kills. Stop your sin. Jesus, Jesus is coming soon. The rapture is imminent. Anyway, folks, until the next video, Jesus loves you and he will forgive you, but you have to be sincere in your, in your heart. And I love you too. Aloha.